If you want to understand the two world wars and a third coming up, you must understand Switzerland, the Knights Templars, the Order of the Garter, and the internal war within Pharaoh's nobility. So here it says, internal war of the nobility. Within Pharaoh's nobility, there are basically two parties, the Royalists and the Republicans. The Royalists want the old world order, vertical rule of the feudal system, with just one king, Pharaoh, master, giving all the directives and all the orders, and they don't want to mix all the peoples, races, and religions. Their main adversary are the Republicans. New World Order, horizontal rule, founded by the Knights Templars, who are also Pharaoh's nobility. And they want to mix all peoples, races, and religions, because when all peoples are mixed in a country, then the people will have no more ancestral identity, saying, for instance, we are English. This is our country, our heritage, our language, our physical appearance, our religion, and we won't take any more orders from Parliament and their centralized government. So here it says, Order of the Garter. So for Pharaoh's nobility, it will be much easier to rule over a mixed breed of slaves who consequently don't have those nationalistic issues anymore, like self-rule. So here on this side, you see the order of the garter, where it says, Oni Swaki Maripans. It's a very old picture, probably from the 15th century, or maybe 14th. And here it says, their plan. And on the other side, it says, between quotation marks, happy humanity. And here you see a melting pot uh, family. And here you see, of course, the um, checkerboard configuration of the Freemasons. So their plan, happy humanity, between quotation. For myself, I don't mind if you want to mix yourselves up or not. I'm neither left-wing nor right-wing. I just hate the evil idea of total control behind it all by our pharaonic masters and their order of the garter. So here it says again, Oniswaki Malipans, the order of the garter, their plan, and between quotation, it says, happy humanity. And you can see here a melting pot mixed uh, happy family. As the old monarchies of Europe, like Germany and Austria, didn't want to accept the new and literally revolutionary rule of the horizontal Republican Templars and their mixing up of Pharaoh's slaves, World War I started with World War II as a consequence and even more difficult to understand if you don't know about the nobility's internal quarrel. So you see the German, here it says, German nobility and its emperor. Here's the, the German emperor. And uh, here they got all these cheese picks on top of it, you know. Yeah. The Second World War was most of all a war of putting, or trying to put, 
the German Emperor Wilhelm II back on the throne and restore the German monarchy from the New World Order Horizontal Republicans, as the German Emperor got abdicated in 1918 at the end of World War I. So here we can see the Emperor on his throne, and it says here, another world war to put the German Emperor back on the throne, which became World War II which is the real reason. I mean, all the reasons for all these wars are to be found in Pharaoh's nobility and most of all, their internal wars. And as there was such tremendous hatred for one another within Europe's nobility, the German emperor and the German high nobility said, Okay, if you want to mix all peoples, all races, and all religions in my German Empire, I will show you once and for all, with a final solution, what we will do with that idea. So here it says the Emperor's Totenkopf. So this symbol here, we know far too well from World War II about the uh, SS Totenkopfverbände and the SS Einsatzgruppen doing the final solution and other things. It's already the same symbol, you know, during the World War I. So that means this symbol is not from the German people. It's from the nobility, from Pharaoh's nobility, wakey, wakey people. So, and here you see the octagon. Here, the, the Pharaonic Sash, Templar's Cross here, Templar's Cross there. And here is the idea of the other ones, you know, the, um, the Order of the Garter. And this is a, a melting pot American uh, happy family. So, and these ones here, they didn't like that, you understand. And this all led to the final solution. Because the new world order, they want to mix everything. And the old world order, they just don't like the idea. And this is the main reason for the whole catch. Which word I may not pronounce because of the global censorship of Pharaoh's new world order dictatorship. One is not allowed to say anything anymore about the whole catch if you don't want to go to prison. And even the pronouncing of the word for the whole catch will have your video immediately censored, or if you write the word in the title. So I chose the word whole catch because it sounds phonetically similar and starts with an H. Hole catch means they caught them and put them in a hole. So here it says the whole catch and here censorship vocabulary. So the whole catch of World War II was not a result of racial hatred by the German people, but the whole catch was a direct result of Pharaoh's nobility's internal war between the new horizontal rule and the old vertical rule. So here you see the German Emperor Wilhelm II. Here is a Templar's cross, and here it says, Gott mit uns which means God with us. Well, my question is, is God with the German people or with these ones here? Right. And in the Nazi army, they had this on their belt, Gott mit uns. So here it says, nobility's 
internal wars. And here they're standing with all, all standing with their sabers here and their sashes and their octagons and, and Templar crosses and whatnot. The German emperor said, I'm happy with my German slaves who do their work well, who are obedient, who believe everything I tell them and who just need a beer or two in the evening to be happy. I don't want all those jaywalkers in my empire who don't even work as their men don't work and pray their holy books the whole day. So there are no men hours made in these communities and consequently no taxes to be deducted and extracted to hell with them. Altogether with the Bohemians who don't work either. I say here Bohemians as the censorship probably won't allow me the usual word to address them with. You know, these boys and girls who are traveling with caravans. You know what I mean. I've got nothing against the Bohemians. I've got nothing against these people. And neither do I have anything against these jaywalkers whom you can see, see here. Here it says, no man hours for Pharaoh's nobility. You know, for Pharaoh's nobility, a person's life is being measured in man hours and how many taxes can be extracted in this autosufficiency slave system of Pharaoh. And if the subjects refuse to work like orthodox jaywalkers or the Bohemians, they automatically become useless eaters for Pharaoh's nobility because they can't be parasited on by the masters. Same thing happened at this recent rave party of October the 7th, 2023 in the desert where some useless eaters with long hair and taking drugs were sacrificed by pharaohs, politicians and betrayed by their own army. Similar to the Friday the 13th, 2015, Paris Bataclan sacrifice of similar long-haired heavy metal fans full of drugs and similarly defined as useless eaters for Pharaoh. Anyone recognizes the same pattern? Huh? So here it says Bataclan. Uh, the name of the band was Eagles of Death. There was a metal band. These orthodox jaywalkers and the Bohemians were the poorest people in Europe who refused to work and integrate into Pharaoh's civilization and consequently pay taxes to Pharaoh's nobility. So they were of no more use to the masters and had to go. So here you see the jaywalker, he doesn't even have shoes. Here you see the Bohemians, no shoes either. Well, these got nice boots, eh? These ones too. Here it says, no money to be extorted by Pharaoh. And Pharaoh saw them as useless eaters. And Homi Ross is also being considered a useless eater by Pharaoh and their Swissies. Because there are no taxes to be extracted. And Homi Ross refuses to work for Pharaoh. Although Homi Ross works very hard 
making lots of historical documentaries for mankind and our freedom. It says, Homie Ross, no man hours for Pharaoh. This, and only this, is the true essence of Pharaoh's slogan, Arbeit macht frei. If you don't work and don't pay taxes to Pharaoh's nobility, then this is where you're gonna end up. A place for useless eaters of the old pharaonic slavery system. The slogan Arbeit macht frei is not by the German people, but from the Aryan masters of Pharaoh's nobility who keep humanity in total slavery and keep them working for them in the new pharaonic slavery system of autosufficiency. And if you don't work and don't join the autosufficiency slave system, then you'll end up in the old slave system, as you can see here, where it says Arbeit macht frei in one of Pharaoh's camps. So for those who refuse to pay taxes to Pharaoh and don't comply with the new Pharaonic system, like Homi Ross, like the Orthodox jaywalkers, like the Bohemians, like the long-haired hippies or rave partiers, well, then the old Pharaonic slave system will be applied unto them under the slogan Arbeit macht frei. So, in fact, Arbeit macht frei, it means work and you will be free in the new slavery system of the autosufficiency system, where it seems you are free. And, you know, this is something only Pharaoh's nobility could invent. This is why the German Old World Order nobility came up with this identitarian Germanic propaganda in order to unite the German people into a war, which was not theirs, but an internal war of Pharaoh's nobility. Who are the real Aryans and master race in this equation and false flag operation? As in the demotic scriptures of Pharaoh's language, Ah means big or pregnant, Ri is the sun, and On Osiris, Ah Ri On, meaning we were born out of the sun, we are not from here. We are the master race, the pharaohs of Egypt and their descendants of the entire European nobility. So here it says, A ri on, ri is the sun, and A it means big or pregnant. So this means they're born out of the sun, being born out of the sun. And here you see uh, the British nobility, here the um, emperor, the German emperor, and who are in fact one and the same family. They both have Queen Victoria as an ancestor. You know, we're being ruled by one family, the Per A, which means the big house, out of which the word Pharaoh comes from, Per A. This here is the big Per A. And they all got the octagons and the Templars crosses and the sashes. Here's a red sash, a golden sash. It's all one and the same. So here you see the no Pharaoh's nobility. And it says royalists versus republicans. Because most noblemen, they only see these two parties. They think... Most of them, they think they're only royalists and republicans within 
Pharaoh's nobility. And then within the nobility, there is in fact an obscure and even more occulted party, which even most members of the nobility themselves don't understand, as most noblemen only see the royalists and the republicans. This third party is the Order of the Garter, which is an even more elitist group and a so called compromise between the royalists and the republicans of Pharaoh's nobility, which I've already explained to you in my previous videos and much more. So I don't have to repeat that and the basics of things. So here you see the Order of the Garter with their cloaks and all this, here the checkerboard configuration. And here it says, third party, Order of the Garter. So next to royalists and republicans of Pharaoh or within Pharaoh's nobility, there is a third party, the Order of the Garter, which is supposed to be a compromise. But what most noblemen don't know is that the Order of the Garter is in fact a wolf in sheep's clothes, also called a psyop nowadays, because they're entirely controlled by the New World Order Templars of the Octagon and the Swissies, in order to confuse the nobility with the noble idea of a compromise, whereas the compromise in reality is a Trojan horse. So here it says, Oniswakimali Pals, uh, the Order of the Garter, and here is a Knights Templar. On the left hand side it says the Garter, short for the Order of the Garter, also sometimes called just the Garter. And on the right hand side, the Knights Templars, and they are the same. The Garter is the Knights Templars. So the Order of the Garter was supposed to be a compromise within the nobility of the Republicans, the new Templar system of the horizontal rule, and on the other side, the uh, monarchist or royalist, the, the vertical rule of the old feudal system. But in fact, they are still the ones even controlling the Order of the Garter which was their idea in the first place, these ones here, to make a compromise, but they kept the Trojan horse inside. And this is where it gets very tricky. Only with this knowledge one can understand the betrayal of Adolf Hitler towards the German nobility, who were all big pals standing together in the beginning of the war. But then the German nobility tried to liquidate Hitler at the end of the war by Count von Stauffenberg in 1944 and the organization of July 20th. Here we can read the list of members of the July 20th plot in 1944 here, when at the end of the war the German nobility and a lot of high nobility, they understood um, that they were betrayed by, uh, by Adolf Hitler. So even if these ones here, they don't have the von, which in the German nobility normally, uh, you know, if there is this von, you know they are of the nobility. You know, a diplomat, of course, you know, and it, it's a count, this one here. It says Graf, Albrecht Theodor Andreas Graf von Bernstorff, uh, Bern, capital of Switzerland. So if there is this von, you know, you know, they're of the nobility. But even these ones here, without the von, 
They are probably also of the nobility because this one is a colonel, a general, a lieutenant colonel here. You know, it's all it's all pharaoh's nobility anyway. So here they conspired against Hitler and they all got here, you can read here, he got executed, executed, hanging, firing squad. You know, the count, yeah, he got uh, in 1945, in all 1944. Um, this one survived. Maybe he wasn't of the nobility. Well, he was only a colonel. Eh? And so Gottfried Graf von Bismarck, you know, the count. Well, he survived, funny enough, eh? Von Blumenthal, he got executed in 1944. Von Böhmer, he got hanged in 1945 by the Nazis. So all these aristocrats, they all got executed by the Nazis. You know, it's quite funny, eh? I'll explain it to you. Von Böselager, killed in action. Von Böselager, oh, he survived. Uh, he got executed here, executed, executed. He got shot, hanged, hanged. Um, so, yeah, more oh, nobility. Von den Buscher, Freiherr, nobility, you know. Uh, Canaris, yeah, he got hanged, hanged all in 1944. Um, so you read it yourself, yeah. Tudona Schlobitten, also nobility. He got hanged from Donani. Uh, he got hanged in 1944-45. Uh, von Falkenhausen, Freiherr, nobility. Mm. He got hanged here, a colonel, he got hanged. Von Loringhoven, Freiherr, nobility, he got hanged. Graf, a count, Fluger von Glött. Uh, Gere, he got hanged. Von Gersdorf, survived. Actually, a lot of the nobility, they survived, eh? He got hanged. Yeah, Freiherr von und zu Gutenberg. Uh, he got hanged in 1945. Von Heften. He got hanged. Another von Heften. He got uh, firing squad in 1944. So even at the end, you know, at the end of the war, you know, of 1945, you know, they, they, they just wanted to murder them, you know, just at the end of the, uh, even when the war was already lost, you know. Von Hagen, hanged. Von Harlem, hanged. Von Hardenberg, a landowner, you know. Von Harnack. Uh, he was hanged. Von Hasen executed. Von Hassel hanged. A Graf von Heldorf, a count. He got hanged. So you see, it's 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 all nobility here, and all generals and colonels. Von Hofhacker, he got hanged. Uh, von von Hüslin, he got hanged. Some more colonels and generals. Von Kleist, Schmenzen, uh, nobility, he got hanged. Von no more von Kleist, Schmenzen, while well, he survived. Eh? Uh, it's all nobility von Kluger. 
suicide, where they were suicided or forced to kill themselves. You know, here you got a gun, you you can choose. You know. Von Lehndorf Steinort Graf, that means he was a count. He got hanged in 1944. Um, Freiherr von Leonrod, nobility, he got hanged. So, the, you know, the, the nobility, they understood at the end of the war, they got betrayed by, uh, by Adolf. And um, there was no emperor and the nobility getting back the old world order. They definitely understood they were not getting back in power. Freiherr, nobility, he got executed, hanged, 1944. So you can see here, it's uh, it's an internal war going on here. Von Matushka hanged 1944. Von Quernheim nobility firing squad 1944. They're all high officers, eh? Von Erzen nobility. They forced him to kill himself 1944. Margarete, oh, here's a, a, a woman, survived. It's nobility, all the von is nobility. Von Plettenberg, a landowner, it says. He got suicided. Here we got the, the, uh, the desert fox. Probably also nobility, you know, that uh, they just took away the von, as I told you, von Rabenau, nobility, hanged in 1945. And uh, von Rönne, Freiherr, Freiherr means nobility, he got hanged. And uh, von Schlabrendorf. So, you see, you know, it's not the ordinary German people who were in power. You know, even the Second World War, the First World War, it's all pharaohs, nobility, you know. And the dumb slaves of the people, they just believed everything, you know. And uh, you know, a Graf, it's a count, he got hanged in 1944. Von der Schulenberg, he got hanged. Graf, another count. Here it says Graf, he also got hanged in 1944. So only the, no, the nobility, they, uh, they conspired against uh, uh, Hitler at the, end of the, uh, at the end of the war. Von Stauffenberg, there he is, was a German aristocrat and lawyer, well, it, all, it all goes together, you know, lawyer and power. He got hanged in 1944. Actually, his, uh, his, uh, his daughter went to Switzerland, his granddaughter living in, uh, oh, this was another Stauffenberg family, a judge. And here, the, here he is, Klaus von Stauffenberg, account executed 1944. And uh, his granddaughter is living in Zurich. Von Stulp Nagel, also nobility, a general, hanged. Uh, Freiherr von Thun, execute firing squad 1944, that's also nobility. Von Treskov, more nobility, suicide 1944. Von Trottu Solz, nobility, firing squad, Nikolaus von Uxkul Gülenband, hanged, nobility, von Willissen, nobility, oh, he survived, wow. And uh, von Witzleben, field marshal, Nobility hanged in 1944. Von Wartenberg hanged in 1944. Heistermann von Zielberg. It's all nobility, you know. So 
we can definitely see here the uh, internal war uh, between the three uh, parties of the nobility, the royalists, the republicans, the royalists who didn't want to mix all the peoples like and um, the uh, republicans who mix all the peoples and races and religions and the uh, most of the old world order they don't want that and then there was the trojan horse the order of the garter and only at the end of the war the german high nobility here the old world order whom i just all showed to you here who got all executed they understood they got betrayed finally by the order of the garter and um, how it all worked out and, and they understood that hitler he was uh, one of them of the order of the garter who were actually the republican knights templars a uh, trojan horse here you can see Hitler together with the German president from 1925 till 1935 for uh, Paul von Hindenburg, again the von nobility. So he was the president and he actually made Adolf Hitler the chancellor in 1934. And afterwards he died the same year, von Hindenburg he died. So here it says Hitler and German President Paul von Hindenburg, who was the president of Germany from 1925 to 1934, almost 10 years. And just read his face, you know, there's something going on there, isn't it? Now, eh? look at all the octagons and all the Templars crosses. Um, he doesn't trust it, the whole thing. He doesn't trust the betrayal of this man. He already knows it, you know. So it's, it's all Pharaoh's nobility and internal wars, people. The whole Second World War, the First World War, um, we're being lied to. Also, Rudolf Hess flying to England and Pharaoh's nobility of the Duke of Hamilton called the Englandflug in German for the flight to England in 1941 shows there was something fishy going on between the Nazis and Europe's nobility. Something very suspicious indeed. Like something internal about which the people should never know. And that's why they kept Hess in prison, locked away for the rest of his life to keep the lid on, to keep the secret hidden away from the people. And in those days, there was not such a thing as Scotland. There were just England and Germany. So for historians taking the actual vocabulary of those days, the Hess event is called after the German Der Englandflug or the England flight. Here you see a commemoration coin. It says Friedensflug nach England, 1941. The peace flight to England. There's no Scotland. Here in the book by, uh, by Mr. Hamilton uh, himself or the um, uh, descendant, Geheimflug nach England, so there's no England, there's no Scotland, and also here they call it, I'm not sure if you can read it, I'll show you a better picture afterwards, Der Englandflug, no Scotland, it was just England, England having a war with Germany, that's all. It was in the media, it was, uh, and his, for historians, it's, um, this is how the event is being called, the England flug. No other words. Here it says, uh, maybe you can read it better here, Der England flug von Rudolf Hess, Stellvertreter des Führers. So, the England flight. 
you know, no Scotland. It says they they call it Friedensbote for peace. Well, forget about that, eh? It's about the internal war uh, within the nobility. That's what it's all about. Here to the left, you can see the Duke of Hamilton. You know where the uh, Rudolf Hess wanted to fly to. A duke, yeah, with all his octagons and Templars crosses. Well, my question to you is. Um, is this guy Scottish or is he of Pharaoh's nobility? And again, in those days, there was no Scotland. It was just England. You know, it was the big empire, the England, the, you know, only. And here you can see him with his castle. I'm not sure if it's the same duke, by the way. Maybe it's another descendant. This was the Rudolf Hess duke. Here is the, another duke of Hamilton, or maybe it's the same one. And here you can see his castle, which is in a place, you know, being called Scotland. But this has nothing to do with the Scots. This is Pharaoh's nobility, and it all belonged to England. So here it says Hitler and King Edward. So here you see Hitler shaking the hands of Wallace Simpson, the wife of King Edward VIII, whom you can see here. And look how they are smiling, having a nice time together, right? And you all believe the story of King Edward VIII being abdicated just before World War II because of Wallace, Wallace Simpson and why the Nazis never bombed Windsor Castle but every child's bedroom around it. I tell you, British naval intelligence had their noses deep into it and knew exactly what was going on. Here it says King Edward VIII and the Garter. So here is the Garter with Oniswakimali Pons, this thing they tie around their leg. And here you see two times King Edward VIII in his cloak of the garter here you see the symbol of the garter they got this like blue velvet cloak and a, a red sash all the colors are here white red and blue for pharaoh's colors so you keep on believing those fairy tales of kings princes princesses and their castles huh they shouldn't have murdered my grandfather. And here it says Agent Hitler. Here is the Order of the Garter, Oniswakimoli Pons, with a sort of a uh, Templar's cross. And this man here betrayed about everyone in Germany. He betrayed the German people and he betrayed the German nobility. So here it says, 1940, Dunkirk, 350,000 soldiers trapped. Here you see them, you know, like a sitting duck, you know. This was not a mistake, you know, this was on purpose, you know. So Hitler, sparing the English army in Dunkirk in 1940, where in fact Nazi Germany could have decided the war by killing 350,000 British, French, and Belgian soldiers. Because Hitler was a spy and agent of the Order of the Garter, who were in the hands of the octagon of the Knights Templars in the motherland of evil in the Alps, who had financed Hitler from the beginning onwards in Zurich, 1923. So here it says, Agent of the Garter. Here's the agent. Here's the Order of the Garter with the octagons, and here only Swaki Malipals. And here's the big loser, the Emperor of Germany, and the Old World Order, uh, William Wilhelm II. 
So from the very beginning onwards in 1348, the Order of the Garter has always been an organization by the Knights Templars to lure their brothers of the aristocracy into this Trojan horse trap, which was never so much executed as by the traitor Adolf Hitler during World War II by making a false alliance with the old world order German nobility, but in reality betraying them by his real friends of the New World Order Templars of the Alps. Therefore, yes, we might assume that Hitler was a British spy through the Order of the Garter, thus also betraying, in fact, the British, as the Order of the Garter has always been a spy organization of the Swamplers in the motherland in the Alps. Hitler betrayed everyone, and most of all, the German people, who still don't understand what really happened, and still get the blame for everything, for something our masters and the beast of the Alps in fact bear all responsibility. So here it says, feudal slaves of Pharaoh's nobility, waving with their flags of indoctrination. These feudal slaves who still don't understand what's going on. My grandfather and officer in British naval intelligence, apparently knew that Hitler worked through the order of the Garter just before my grandfather got killed in 1942. And he also knew that de Gaulle was a traitor. And there are more things that run in my family about which I'd like to tell you. In this respect, next time, I will show you some secret documents written by the German emperor about Hitler that have never been published before and what will emphasize furthermore what I'm revealing you here. Thing is that the documents are mostly in German. And though I speak, read, and write German fluently, it all takes time and energy. So I decided to publish and translate the documents in a separate video afterwards. In connection to all of this, I would strongly advise you to watch this video here I made a couple of years ago again on the same channel, Gyuri, and here is the title. So you just scroll down in the video section. And so, so I don't have to do all this again. Uh, so I made it three years ago. In October the 4th, 2020. So it's a lot of work. You know, so I'm not going to do this again. So I'd urge you to watch this video. You know, there are no castles in Europe built before the year 1000. As Europeans never built in stone, just building tribal huts out of dirt, shit, and straw like in Africa. The first stone buildings in Europe were the castles built by Pharaoh's nobility, as they were used to 
at River Nile. Today, there are still 35,000 castles in France, all built around the year 1000, with maybe one or two exceptions. So there must have been a pharaonic invasion around the year 1000, where Pharaoh's nobility took the Europeans as slaves in a feudal system for the next thousand years until today, including the modern world. So the European tribes, they were taken into slavery, just as happened with the American Indians. And until then, the Europeans, they were living as nomads in dirt huts and tents, and just without anything. Same thing, Re history always repeating itself. We're all tribesmen, all the peoples and all races of the world. We've got only the tribes and Pharaoh. And their main base has always been and will forever be Switzerland in the Alps, the base of Pharaoh's nobility out of where they rule the entire world and all nations.